On today's episode of Watch Share Go, we find out if you guys were right in the comments. What is going on guys? I am Watch J Argo and today I'm here with Gabe. We've got the Veloster and we're gonna pull the coils and the plugs one more time to triple check that it's not a rod noise. The comments uh, were 50-50, it's timing, and it's a rod knock. If we find out that it's actually a failed rod, we're just gonna go ahead and replace the engine instead of doing the timing set. When we get in here, we'll hop under the hood of the Veloster right now. Somewhere right there. Yeah, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Kind, sir. Uh, basically, to work on the timing set, oh, I've ripped that thing out. You have to pull the entire side of the engine off. So you start with the valve cover and you pull all of the upper stuff off here. You don't have to take off the intake or anything, but you do have to take out the alternator, the engine mount, and then the entire side of the engine, which also contains the oil pump, to work on the timing set. So at that point, we're not very far from just replacing the engine. So we're gonna figure it out like, if it's really just a $64 part, 100% we're changing a $64 part. Amen. If it's a timing guide, anything like that, we're gonna change that. But if we find out it's a rod right now, engine's going. It's just too easy to work on. This engine literally starts right here, ends right there, has tons of room to work on, and it'll come out with, you just unplug this big connector that is all of the wire on top of the engine. Thank you, Hyundai, for making this car super easy to service. I'm pretty happy with the Veloster layout. So for the last time, let's pull all the coils out, all the plugs out, and we're gonna turn the crank by hand, and then I'll show you how to uh, check for a failed rod bearing or a failed rod with a screwdriver. Yeah. So the crank is seven eighths, the coils are tens. The coils are, man, did, did we leave these loose or did you already loosen them? Um, I did not loosen them. Well, I guess I just left them loose last time. This thing is ready to come apart in a hurry. Plugs are the only thing that are in there, for real. All right, so. Thinking ahead. My memory is all of 18 seconds long. Sorry, bud. I <laughs> uh, that was a good joke. I borrow this for oh, you're, you're good, I'm done. I've got all the plugs uh, loose. Sweet. Game time, let's explain how we're gonna do this. This is how you check for rod knock if you suspect you have it. We're going to turn the engine over consistently in one direction. We're gonna shine a light down in the cylinder. We're gonna watch the piston come all the way up until it hits the top. That's top dead center, right? And then we're gonna keep turning it over, just another five, 10 degrees maybe. And then we're gonna take a big long screwdriver down there in the spark plug hole and push. And if we feel any give, the rod bearings are bad. The rod's bad, something's wrong. Wrist pin's bad, who knows? Uh, something in the linkage in the rotating assembly right there is bad. So uh, it's a really easy way to find out without having to take the oil pan off and actually wiggle the rods on the crank or anything like that. This uh, shouldn't take more than a few minutes for you to do, other than the time it takes to pull coils or spark plug wires and spark plugs out. So let's get to it. Is this, <laughs> I don't think it's long enough. Just a quick note, if you have a coil on plug engine and the spark plugs are buried all the way down on a spark plug well, be careful going through the threads, don't tear them up. And you're gonna need a very long screwdriver too. One that will go way down in there. So size matters. Okay, you're coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up. Getting phone calls, blowing up. Now you're blowing, blowing up. <laughs> and now you're going down. Okay. okay. Right over TDC, screwdriver's going in. Okay. If you guys watch very carefully here, if I can get through the threads that is. Oh, I'm on the piston top already. All right, here we go. What just happened? It moved too much. All right, let's go for number two and then I'll uh, get a close up for you guys too because it's kind of important to see what we're doing here. So go ahead. So number one moved. Number one moved a lot, more than it should have. It shouldn't move at all. No, that one felt solid. All right, okay, you all right. Take it back down a little bit. Uh, I think you're already going down. Keep going. You were going down. Okay. Let's try this one. All right, number three, coming up, coming up. You're at the top. It's turning over. Go a little bit more. A little bit more. Like one big, one more big click. There it goes. Okay, here we go. Number three. That one feels pretty solid. I'm pretty happy with that. Mm -hmm. We're almost to TDC on four. Oh, you're going back down. Perfect. Okay. That one feels solid. The only one we need to recheck right now is number one. So let's go ahead and run it back up. 
Okay. Okay, so let's get you guys a close up of what happens if you have a failed rod. Maybe. Hey! And now we're going to actually test this. Here we go. Yep. Nice big bang. That was. Number one is toast. It wasn't number two as we suspected. What are your thoughts? Wrist pin, rod, bearing, something, it seems. It's definitely not where it should be. Yeah. It should be solid and we get that nice audible pop. Right. And you can actually feel it from the engine. Okay, did onto. you feel a nice little pop yeah. while your arm was yeah, down there? Actually, when you're holding on to the crank, you can feel it. Yeah, actually, just run it up and down. We can see the screwdriver move. <laughs> All right, let's see. This screwdriver is now the representation of our piston. So you can get it, there's BDC probably, really close to BDC. Coming back up, coming back up, coming back up. And there's TDC and over, and now, yep. She dead. I mean, dead, dead. We could spend a few thousand dollars fixing this engine, or we could put a brand new one in for a few hundred. Well, we've got our answer. I guess it's time for me to make a call to J&J Auto Wrecking and see what we can find. I, I'm sure they have one of these. I found a bunch of them on eBay for about a thousand. I think one of them was 800. I bet we can get a pretty good deal from J&J &J, and I'm more than happy to have them ship another one after that last one that just showed up like- Oh, with Camry? Three days later. Oh man, yeah. That was impressive, it. yeah, mind blown. Delivered it to the doorstep, it was wonderful. We're gonna recheck cylinder two for fun. Just to be sure. There were a lot of comments saying that it was cylinder two, and I kind of thought it was because it was also the one that sounded different, but definitely one. All right, that's probably TDC right there. There it is, it's starting to move. Nothing. Completely solid. Now, put it back over here and... I think, are you just having fun beating? Oh, it's got a spark plug in it. Oh, that would be why. Do you want? Well, I was, I was, thought it'd be interesting for you to see what that feels like over here. Oh. So you can actually feel that pop. Coming back up, coming back up. There we go. <laughs> you can feel it all the way through the engine. Yeah. All right, so, <clears throat> new engine. Yep. And then the Hyundai will be back on the road and we will sell this for four times what I paid for it? Almost, yeah, I think. Seems like a good number to me. Everyone was like, it's a Veloster, it's junk. I was like, well, my Audi engine begs to disagree. Yeah. Because <laughs> I am so, the Audi engine will be here Monday. Now Are you, you excited? It was supposed to be here this last Monday, but it will be here this Monday. So you, you got the Predator engine from, uh, yes. from uh, Harbor Freight. Right? Actually, I got the old Predator 620cc. Nice, nice, And nice. Uh, we're gonna do a single wheel drive with a single disc brake, and that will be the RH3 drivetrain, right? I love it, it'll be the only one in the country. There's not even a point in putting all these back, is there? You know what there's really not a point of? Me throwing the bolt across the engine bay. That we might wanna hold on to. <laughs> that was an accident. Uh, and my 10 millimeter fell in the engine bay and disappeared forever. I'm so much more concerned about my deep quarter inch drive 10 than I am about any of these bolts because we'll have new ones so that's actually why we're replacing the engine right because i want the 10 back no, i mean yeah I, I feel you i knew you'd understand i do okay so mutual friend of ours bruce uh -huh. uh, used to work on the opals and actually had his own opal um automotive shop oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. out arizona. in arizona yeah. yeah he told me about that so he had all of his stuff engraved uh-huh he lost his tent Years later, we're talking like 20 years later, some guy comes and is like, you know, hey, I got this Opal. He's like, yeah, I used to work on them. You know, sure, you know, I can help you out. Uh huh. <laughs> he goes to pull the uh, uh, carburetor off and there is his 10 millimeter socket <laughs> still on. <laughs> that is amazing. Yes. Oh, those, that's not a story you hear every day. No. My long lost tin came back to me in another state. Exactly. <laughs> this one is like, it's right in here somewhere on top of the transmission in one of the castings, I think. Well, we have the slightly unfortunate, but also um, it's not, it's really not that big of a deal. The difference between $64 and tearing the whole car apart and $500 and tearing the whole car apart is about the same. It's still a whole day of our labor, honestly. And once we get in there, of course, what we end up doing, everything else that went along with it, probably do the plastic guides. And the other problem was if it was the variable valve timing cam sprockets, they're $250 each. 
Either way, uh, maybe <laughs> next week we'll get this back on the road. And we need to because I need space to get this engine in here. And I'm really excited about this guy. I mean, this is the important job right here. And uh, over here at, what do we call this? Watch chair goes engine swap central. That's sure, the... <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> well, I appreciate all the comments that were, like the suggestions were all over the board. A lot of people said it was the timing guides and a lot of people were like, nah, it's a rod. And I figured we better check before we start tearing off the side of the engine because there's no turning back. It's, this is like changing the engine and working on the timing is the same process on this car basically. So can't wait to get into it. Can't wait to drive this car. I'm excited about the dual clutch prospects. I'm excited to clean this car because it's a absolute nightmare. Dude, it's, dude. <laughs> We're just gonna call, call Thomas. So that's it for today guys. Please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do and I will talk to you next time. You're like a ninja. I don't think you could actually make it over here. There's no stealth mode in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> You guys will see that car tomorrow. This is a Hoovy Hoopty. This is a Hoovy cart. <laughs> it's, it's perfect. <laughs>